All right, guys, welcome back here. Match day seven, the ESL Pro League season five. I'm Stunna. This is Vendetta, and we got a real barn burner for you guys. We've got Immortals, and we got Cloud9. What do you, I mean, what do you think? First off, it should be a really good game. Uh, we talked about it. Yeah, both teams are flying back from Katowice, but they oftentimes play each other really, like, really close, and they're both going to be in the same situation, right? Like, none, like one of the teams is not going to have an upper hand in that sense. Absolutely. Or they're both on a level. Yes, they're absolutely on a level playing field. Let's take a look at the Cloud9 roster. Uh, as we took a look at it earlier, let's do it one more time. Nothing, Shrouds, Skadoodle, Stewie2K, Tim Ta. Uh, which name sticks out to you the most here? Well, Tim Ta is definitely one of them. Him and Stewie probably are the two biggest uh, biggest stars in that sense and how brightly they've shown uh, as of late. So really fun to see uh, kind of the new guys and uh, taking charge and taking the reign is really on Cloud9. Exactly. I mean, these guys, <sighs> that dynamic duo, right? Stewie, yeah. Tim, That's that's been the storyline here ever since EPL Season 4 Finals. Uh, and, you know, we're actually going to take a look now at the second week of their performance here at EPL. But these guys, when they're firing away on all cylinders, then, it, it, you know, it, it's clicking, to be working. Yeah. You know, it, it's there in NA. So that seems to be like their biggest struggle right now, their biggest hurdle. Uh, they're, they're not too far away from the pack. I mean, we've seen them take W's. Uh, just not nearly as many as they want to internationally. Yeah, but I think that's going to come in time. And uh, it's like you said, when when Stewie and Automatic are are on it, like when they're feeling it and they just get that tiny bit of extra push from either Ska, Nothing, or, or Shroud, then they can take down big opponents without them. They wouldn't win versus a team like SK at Katowice if they didn't have it in them, right? So for them, it's all about finding that consistency, being able to perform when you go outside of your, your own borders in that sense. I mean, Cloud9, obviously, 25-1 and one last online season uh, leading up to the Pro League Finals, sitting currently undefeated. Right now, I think they're the, the favorite team to, to take a little bit further. But let's take a look at their opponents tonight. It's going to be the Immortals uh, with the addition recently of FNX. We've got Steel, Lucas, Henny, and Bolts. These guys, obviously, here to play. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And uh, again, this is one of those cool scenarios where you see lineup changes being made and probably both teams coming out uh, pretty well off of it. I think FNX is a magnificent addition to this team, and uh, I think it's going to allow for you know potential stars like Henny to get to that consistent level where you see him shine out every single game, which is what they need. So. I think, yeah, the future looks really bright for that Brazilian team. Okay, so we've got the Brazilian team in Immortals. We've got Cloud9, the American team, plus that Shroud guy. He's got that <laughs> Canadian Maple yeah. Leaf thing going on. Uh, we're going to see them on train first. Give me some quick thoughts on train. Well, the scary thing for Cloud9 and their potentially perfect record here, uh, they went 25-1. and one. All right, in the in last season, I think this might be their first L uh, to their name of this season because they don't really play train all that much, or at least not as of late. So I think that's why Immortals are coming into this with this map pick, uh, or I would assume this is Immortals map pick, uh, given the this state of things, right? So a bit worried for Cloud9 going to that map. Going over to Cobble, though, I feel a lot more confident in uh, what we can see from from Cloud9. Well, very confident behind the Telestrator is Eric DeBear Stromberg, who's going to run us through a little bit of Cloud9's train. Take it away, Eric. Thank you, Stunna. We're going to take a look at Cloud9 versus Ninjas in Pajamas on train from DreamHack Las Vegas. As you can see right here, Cloud9 starting off with a 4-1 outside default. Pretty standard, not nothing too crazy. Uh, but one thing that's so nice about this is Cloud9 abusing NIP's slow T style of play. As you can see, Nothing and Ska are literally going to be pushing in middle with a nice crossfire angle, or actually a bait set up for, um, for Nothing, as since um, NIP is playing so slow, they're able just to walk right in with no uh, hard problems. And this allows a little peace of mind for Shroud, who's watching Ivy. He, he doesn't have to worry about middle too much. And this also allows Automatic to fall back inside if and I P watch any of Cloud9 demo, they know that Stewie likes to play inside alone a lot. So this is a nice bait setup from Stewie as he's um, continually spotting inside, making noise, trying to pull attention to him. Now with low time coming, any nade, any, any footstep uh, sends clues that they're probably going to hit inside. So after, they, after Automatic hears his pop flash, he's going to toss a really nice Molotov on lower ramp. And this forces NIP to smoke off that Molotov and makes them run through the smoke, as you can see. And this allows Stewie to 
to push, have a kill, automatic, nice kill exchange with Scott picking him up off top, and the automatic's able to pinch the round. It's a nice bait and switch setup. Cloud9 ended up losing the match pretty bad, but uh, you see some moments of brilliance in their play, and I think if they have the confidence and the will, I think they can really do more damage against international teams. Back to you, Stunner. Thank you, Eric. Duly appreciated. Now, we're about to get into this match. It's about to happen real fast. Give me a quick prediction here. Quick prediction is Immortals is going to be able to fend off any sort of shenanigans from Cloud9, at least on train. So going with Immortals for that one. All right. Hey, there it is. I'm going to have to pull for the boys in light blue. I don't know for obvious reasons or whatnot. <laughs> but standing by eagerly are Blue and Daze. We're going to deliver you this match. All righty. Yeah. Thank you very much. And we'll just bounce right off of their topic and talk about Daze. Let's, let's get into who your favorites are. Looking at these two maps that they're going to be playing here, who do you think has the edge on these two? So it's Train and Cobble, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I favorite Cloud9 actually on Train, but I think Immortals is a, not just a better Cobble team. I think they're they're quite you know better than, than uh, C9 is on Cobble. Um, but I actually do favor C9 on Train. I think I think their train has kind of been a little bit worse than it was just a few months ago. But having said that, I am very confident in their train. I think, um, especially on T side, if they can get like momentum going and they can win like a pistol, I think Stewie's really good at, at really abusing um, the outer bomb site with just like five, six and E-box smokes and taking gun battles if, if he knows like they don't have an off posted back six and things like that. Um, I think he can do some, some good damage on that T side. Well, of course, guys, as we can see here, the players are getting ready to go now. But, I mean, overall here, what's what are going to be the key things for Immortals to try and do? Since you're favoriting Cloud9 here, what do, what, do you think, what do you think that Immortals can do to try and counteract that? What are the big key things that they need to look to and try to counter out here to be able to take a victory? Well, I think they're going to have to stop the bursty type strats that Cloud9 likes to do on this map. They're a little bit like SK, uh, strategical-wise, where like they're not afraid to just bulldoze bulldoze down lower ramp with one flash and get an op posted, you know, at Z and, and try to get that pop dog kill. Just trade on that guy, even if you make it 3v4, they could have schedule easily win that round, you know, from, from just a position like that. He, he really knows how to be successful. Having said that, though, FNX being on Immortals now, I think will make their train a lot better. Um, I, I think overall they're a lot better with FNX actually because before they used to rely on winning rounds purely off felt was doing things where like it usually didn't translate to success against really good teams. Like he had his moments, but a lot of the time he would be on Mirage and he'd just like walk through a smoke or get boosted window in a smoke. And it's just like, if anybody's watching it, he's gonna die. But if they're not watching it, he's probably gonna win the round. But obviously when you play against teams, you know, that are like tier one teams, they're usually not gonna, you know, they're usually gonna be ready for those things. They're going to punish them more, than, more often than not. And now with FNX, they kind of went away from that, which just like relying on Phelps to open things up, and they're doing it more in just a team atmosphere. Um, I think all the players can play a little bit looser all, as well, because before, if you had one player that you're kind of relying on, right, a lot of the time everybody plays really tight, you know, because they're waiting for that player. But if you're kind of like have a more balanced attack, and I think FNX gives them that, then they're going to try relying on rounds where everybody could play a little bit looser and take their opportunistic battles. But as a whole, when they want to execute on something, it's going to not be reliant on something like, like I talked about earlier with walking through a smoke or anything. It's going to be reliant on all five of them, you know, getting their skills, doing their job, watching their spots, and then trade killing. Well, as the analysts were quoting earlier, FNX feels confident now in his new team to be able to be the best Brazilian team out there. And we will see if oh, that yeah, will true. Oh, yeah, and he was insane at um, Katowice. Yeah. Like, he was a beast. We're already getting some combat here, and look who it is right up front. It's FNX finding the first kill, quickly traded by Stewie. And unfortunately, Lucas isn't able to back up, but Henny and Steel are there. And oh my goodness, this is a close fight. Look at this from Henny. He's got the most solo. Stewie was able to escape downstairs. And in the meantime, Skadoodle shuffled out over to the A bomb site. As he realized, though, that Stewie's gone down below, he has it. And Stewie, he's going to grab the headshot to allow for Claude 9 to hold on there and pick up the pistol. Yeah, just super chaotic. And, and in those situations where it's very, very chaotic, there is nobody better at those situations than Stewie2k, as he just gets a 4k, immediately realizes that these guys are pushing on ladder. Steel just cannot land these shots. Um, just just one tap on each of those guys on Scott and Stewie, and he wins that round, um, you know, with like almost no HP. So Immortals actually had really, really nice positioning um, that round in, in order to win it, but unfortunately just not able to capitalize uh, off, off of those positions. Nothing already going to get tagged here in the early round two. Down to 67 HP as the rest of Cloud9 sort of just hold into the default holding pattern right now. As I mentioned previously, nothing. Still sitting outside of Ivy, but the rest either in Team A or as you can see in the distance there from the silhouette sitting just outside 
of the uh, ladder room, getting ready to try and go for an outer execute. Immortals will have a heavy stack leading into this one, specifically formulated the three players around sort of the bomb train leading over towards Ivy. They have all three of them stacked there. They do have FNX ready to quickly rotate downstairs if he needs to there through Z. A Bolt is actually going to be the one that strikes first. He's able to take down nothing back over in Ivy, eliminating him and bringing Cloud9 down to four. And there's been no movement beyond this into either of the bomb sites just yet. So nothing has gone down for zero purpose as they've gained yep. no other map control yet. And those are the worst type of deaths. When when you have somebody die and you can't capitalize at all off of that death, you're just out on an island like that. The absolute worst types of types of deaths. Steel as well is just like he spot shrouded to enter. They're not even really sending too much for a rotate. FNX is going around towards it now though. So they do only have three players on that outside site, but they're positioned very, very well. Stewie, in the meantime, does pick up the first kill here for Cloud9 now, eliminating Lucas as they do try to push back in. Automatic finding will more short-lived, though, as he does get traded back out. And FNX, also with the scout in hand, able to pick off Shroud. But again, it's led himself down to an even scenario here. But thankfully for the guys on Immortals, Stewie is very, very lit. Down at 10 HP. FNX sitting back and waiting, though, to see if he can catch anybody going through the cross there. Won't be spotting it. Smoke's still in the way. But in the meantime, Steel pushes forward, finishes off Stewie. Skadoodle taps right back in. Now we're in a 1v1. It's relatively even HP as well. And Skadoodle's just going to fall back and try to play this further away, but that may not be too wise considering the scout's in the hands of FNX. He pushes forward right now, and he will trade things out for his own UMP. So it is an SMG battle to try and close this one out. Skadoodle has spotted it, but the same is true for FNX, as he's now just going to sit in this bomb train. He pushes himself over on the Immortal side. FNX over towards the train, but Skadoodle doesn't realize he's that close. Thankfully, FNX is a team going up on top of the train, but now again, look at this Skadoodle just wasting so much time right now and trying to avoid FNX, and it's going to work out beautifully as FNX runs at a time. No kit in hand. Skadoodle won't even need the kill. As through the timer, he'll win it out and even stays alive as well. Yeah, and, and the way Skidoodle played that, there was no chance he was going to lose that round. Like, absolutely no chance with how he played it. I mean, they, they you know, Immortals had their opportunities to win that round. Uh, I think they played it very well. You know, when you're fourth spot like that and you get it down to a 2v2 and one player has like 2 HP, I think you did a good job, right? Um, but having said that, Skidoodle in that 1v1 doesn't even give FNX a chance to kill him. He spots very safe spots. I mean, unless FNX could have, you know, found like a smoke in a kit, that was pretty much his only chance to have an opportunity to really win the round. And look at this from FNX roll. Rolling right back out there, only getting one kill, however, as things get a bit too chaotic for him to handle. Decent damage done to more than uh, just nothing, however, as Shroud and Stewie also take a bit of a chunk of damage. Unfortunately, uh, beyond that, there was really no defenses set up here for the outer bomb site, and Skidoodle, I think, has even caught onto this quick flank through the White Halls here, watching out for Bolts. Pretty quick job to take him back down. And for the last two, they were trying to follow in Bolts' suit, but they may have to change up their positioning a little bit. I think Lucas may just decide to sort of hang out outside here and look for members of C9 that are exiting, and for Henny, Maybe a similar fate as he's pushing up towards Z right now. And we can see automatic position for that one. He actually does dig automatic, but can't follow through with the kill. Yeah, so just a, a pretty pretty easy answer eco for, for Cloud9. It got a little bit scary when FNX threw that popper at, at Ivy. Got one. He actually definitely could have got another one. Um, but Cloud9 doing a, a 3 one, one anti eco. Here's him again. Yep, he almost had two. Almost. Um, but they do lose that round with only getting one kill, I believe. Uh, now Immortals buying up. No off on the Immortal side, and that's going to change their setup and how they play a lot. Only one flashbang as well. Five smokes to work with, though, so they can isolate the pressure from C9 for a very long time. The one Molotov they did have has also just been used very early on in the round here, too, directly inside of T-Connector. But the problem is, is they threw this smoke deep in T-Con, but they failed to realize that they were already pushing back out. It's one-to-one -one initially. Automatic, they're going to be moving in for more control. Gets hit by a flashbang, but on the drop down, finishes the job on Henny to eliminate him. Lucas, though, lurking his way back outside of the ladder room. He's able to pick up one more, but unfortunately, it's just him and Steel left alive now. And Lucas doesn't have a whole lot of ground to work with, but that peak beautifully works against Automatic. It's going to do there for a trade. Steel again finding one, but he can't finish the job. Skadoodle has better positioning, and at the end of the day, that's going to win him the round for C9. And those are the rounds that C9 are like, they're one of the best teams in the world at, in, in my opinion. Um, when when the other team, you know, they know it was like a second round buy. Um, they know they don't have like a ton of Molotovs and flashbangs and smokes and utility. Cloud9 is really, really good at exploiting that and, and winning their gun battles and, and having a game plan to play against, you know, M4 half armors and limited utility. They're really, really good at winning those rounds. And that's one of their best strengths. 
Well, Cloud9 split themselves up into a default again here, waiting to see if they can catch anyone from the Immortals going for peeks. They, they may actually catch them on those rounds, as they got the Deagles. They may want to try for some cheeky peeks to look for headshots here, but that could prove just as dangerous for C9. And we can already see that on players like Bolts. Checking out back and forth there on the back train by Ivy. Stewie, in the meantime, he's also lurking over here in towards the box halls. And that Molly, a little bit too far to the left, but it scares him out anyway and forces him back. Again, Stewie forcing these guys back one by one. He does the same thing that he did that player in the back of Vauxhall. Let's do the same guy at the bottom of ramps right now. It's working out great. And unfortunately, the Deagle Peaks from Immortals is not finding the impact that they would have liked. So not being able to pick up any kills just yet, but they may have an opportunity for some here on Automatic, but he plays the angles perfectly. Down will go Henny. Lucas and FNX don't fall too far behind. Bolts will sneak in one there against nothing, but already two are live for Immortals here, and they're up against four from C9. Not really in a good position to work against here either. And with Bolts being isolated to that back corner, it's not looking likely that they'll be able to recover here. Yeah, not hitting any of the one days. They had a couple opportunities, um, but they were very, very low chances. I mean, Automatic was barely even jiggle peeking at middle. Steel had a little bit of an opportunity at lower ramp, um, and Bolt's tiny bit of an opportunity at Ivy, but but Cloud9 played that very, very well. Um, you know, getting that Ivy push and, and then pinching towards hell with automatic here. And, you know, just, just not getting one day, keeping their economy, you know, pretty high after that round. But now Mortals has, you know, a ton of nades. They have the flashes, the smoke, Molotovs. So now it's a lot more difficult to do, like, those bursty type of strats that Cloud9 really wants to do on this map. Stewie is going to go really quickly, though, up through Ivy and immediately shuts down Bolts. Shroud follows through with the same thing there to be able to take down Lucas. Henny, still alive and well, but he's close up on the bomb train, and this is where it's going to get too close for comfort. Tries to go for the quick scope, but fails on it. Stewie picking up that kill there, but FNX will be there for a trade. Unfortunately, it's the only one he's going to be able to get. And Steel trying to lurk his way back out. I think Skadoodle is going to be watching for this, so the second he goes outside of that smoke, he is a dead man, and he even throws the Molotov into his face. A little bit close up there, so it actually diffuses itself because he goes back into the smoke. But Steel, out he goes with the flashbang. Skadoodle is ready for it, and he'll grab the kill again. Last kill on the round to finalize things as Cloud9 showing no signs of struggle here at all. Up 6 and 0 now. Yeah, and these very, very fast shots. You know, I thought with that utility on Immortals, they would have been able to stop that. But the Ivy push just came so quick. They get their eyes towards Team Mid, and Stewie just, there's no stopping them. He flies through Ivy, throws a smoke on the Molotov, runs as fast as he can, and gets that kill with back lanes. And that just causes so much confusion on the immortal side. Like, side. like you don't know what's, oh. where to look in that scenario. Stewie gets taken out very early at team mid there. Um, and immortals, you know, if Steel can pick up this kill, he doesn't. So Shroud gets that. That's going to open up the B site. They take it extremely quickly. They're going to be able to get, you know, post plant positioned really fast. But what a shot by Lucas. Lucas and Henny both finding some really good shots at pretty long ranges. Henny's more important. was with a P250, and he somehow managed to get a running headshot there. Against Stewie very early on, so knocking him down, and nothing is going to try to make up for this with some kills over here on the outer bomb site. But he's going to watch out to his left side there too, not spotting bolts originally. He is given time to adjust, but unfortunately neither one finds their mark. Nothing will do. He rocks out of 25 HP, but he corrects his situation, knocking up bolts, and I believe he should have been able to realize that there was someone hiding in the Ivy tunnel there. Skadoodle also now waiting a few moments here to try to bait these guys out. They will lose nothing, so it's evenly down to a 2v2 here. But they've also got control of the outer bomb site. However, in comes FNX. He's going to waste no time and gets the free kill basically on the shroud. They know where Skadoodle's hiding out at, but we've already seen him go. He's yet to die so far in this match, but that could change right here, right now, as we do see FNX challenging him and finally putting him down to the ground. I mean, I'm telling you, ever since FNX joined Immortals, this guy has been just such a beast. I mean, even in this this match, I know they're down 6-1 to one right now, but even even in all these rounds, like a lot of these rounds have been really close because of, of how well he's, you know, played like um, on the anti eco or on their eco rounds and whatnot. Just consistently getting frags, consistently putting his team in, in a good position, in a manageable position to win the rounds. Um, even the rounds, like most of them that they've lost, right? A lot of those, you know, eco rounds came down to 2v2s and whatnot, especially like when he had that scout and Scooter played it really well. Um, but now, you know, they get a full bot round. They, they, they get to, uh, you know, pick up that gun. And again, they have the utility to stop this fast Cloud9 play. Cloud9 ops for Stewie on the op, and they slow it down. Pretty much just a default 2 one 2 it looks like, uh, from the minimap. And Stewie's going to look for an IV kill here. The flashbang rolling in, and he does have a player peek back out. Unfortunately, the flashbang connects onto him, too, so he's not able to spot it appropriately in time. In the meantime, we also have Shroud lurking his way over here into the back box halls. He spotted Steel at the bottom of the ramp, but 
Same thing as before, Steel's not really going to be sticking around to challenge that too much. He immediately falls back to a safer position so that he can be ready to fight that in the event more players from Claw9 do decide to move in to gain a little bit of control. Beyond that, though, nothing really happening across the map right now. It's Claw9 still holding in that default pattern. It does look like Automatic may be trying to move out now. But again, the pop flash with no follow through. Waiting a moment here to see if anyone peeks after the smoke fades, but currently not getting any of it. And Immortals, the same thing on their side as they remain pretty much immobile throughout most of the sites. Bolts, Henny, FNX, pretty much everyone on the team is staying constant in their positions with no rotations to be seen anytime soon as Cloud9 really hasn't given them anything as they're having the same issues as well. But as they push back in, nothing. We can see struggling a little bit here. He manages to push his way through, but he's instantly put back down by FNX. They find that kill against him. Automatic is trying to shift his way in through Tcon here as well, so they can get a little bit of control. Lines went up, but he spotted the second one, so down to another even 4v4. But still, all this control is for naught. They are going inner, and Lucas is going to spot this to call for the rotations. There's one for him, too. He almost gets the third one, but Stewie puts a Stop to it. However, the damage already being done. Steel's rotated back in. Stewie was able to get through the cross. Thankfully for Stewie and the rest of C9, there was no one else really close enough in this bomb site. So when he gets that trade, he does guarantee himself the plan. But now, Automatic needs to help out big time. Stewie is already lit. That doesn't mean he's not going to be able to grab kills, though. He sinks one, is then traded out by Henny. Now it's up to him to 1v2 this. He can't remain safely positioned here in the back halls. He has no Molotov to throw over on top of the bomb. So he will eventually need to jump back in. Henny currently watching for it, but I believe he has his eyes gazed on upper right now. But Steel watching for the bottom. He's got to jump onto the bomb, though. And are we going to see that peek at all from Automatic? He goes for it, jumps off the bomb for a second there, and no, he's not able to get the kill. Immortals still have plenty of time to defuse, and they will be able to grab a second round here. Yeah, and Immortals played that pretty well. I think I think if Automatic even got that kill, Henny might have been able to trade it and get on the bomb. They, they did have a good amount of time left. Um, so they traded off Stewie early enough that they were able to get on the bomb um, with a lot of time left on the clock. And Lucas with a really nice inner hold. I mean, he kills two. He does 87 or so to Stewie. Um, and Stewie's lucky there was no nade there. You know, one HE grenade, and he definitely dies without getting that, that frag and puts into a 3v1. But now, two to six. And if Immortals can win this round, a Cloud9 will probably be on an eco. Um, so, so they are coming back a bit. And he just walks right up to the back of box Boxhaus there. Shroud, again, paying attention to the ramp, not watching for that aggressive a push. And now Lucas even holding off against Automatic's push over there towards Olaf. Skadoodle is able to trade that back out, though. Converts the kill, but still 3v4, not looking great, especially with Bolts having a pretty good track record here on these holds. But they're sinking through the smoke. I don't think they've spotted them. FNX on the other side, though. He's caught the gaze of them. Stewie and Nothing both go down. Skadoodle, a 1v4 put against him. He'd have to ace this to clutch it out, and it's not looking likely. He hasn't even seen FNX up on top. He should see that shadow now, though. Yeah, so he spots that kill at the very least to take him back down. But after that, he still has to move back to retrieve the bomb. As mind you, it's still sitting outside of the T-Connector right now. So he'll give up his position to be able to retrieve that and really just play this as cautiously as possible to maximize the amount of kills and damage that he can do to the Immortals economy. Yeah, and I want you to take a look at the mini-map and see Steel. In my mind, Steel makes this round like almost a 100% win for Immortals because he pushes up, he gets above ladder, he makes sure that he can't come towards inner, That'll and he's going to have a quick flank to outside. That allows Bolts and Henny to just play super passively and just wait until he plants the bomb, and then they could just, you know, collide on him really, really easily. So I... I I, I, whenever you you can contain somebody like that, you want to do that on the CT side. And I really like that that Steel took that uh, initiative. So no one from Immortals really getting impatient about this either. They're really just going to be willing to let the timer run back down since Skadoodle has actually been a pretty dangerous opponent so far in this match. So they're not going to want to take any risks on it. However, Bolts, patience pays off as he essentially just gets the free kill at the end of the round, spots the rifle, and Skadoodle's not paying attention to that Ivy Hall anymore. So walks right in, grabs the kill, and there you go. No one saving from C9 there at the end. All of them to get dispatched of. And now the Immortals... Yeah, and I'm surprised there. that that's the way they wanted to win the round was by, you know, I think it was three team mid, two Ivy, but the timing was really off, right? Those guys team mid just ran out. And then the Ivy guys started walking out, you know, 10 seconds, 12 seconds or so after those team mid guys died. So, I mean, you're playing against Bolts. Bolts is... Bolts is one of the players on CD side that is super difficult to lurk on if you're a T. Like, he... He almost never gets surprised. I, I know Stu was able to pick him off that first gun round as they're in a save here, and it looks like they're just going to try to get bombed down at upper, most likely. Uh, pretty low chance of winning this round, although they do have those flashbangs. Maybe they can get lucky here. Um, but Bolts is really difficult to lurk on. He really, like, pays attention to everything. He never gets surprised. He rotates really well and takes his time. Um, so I'm surprised that they tried to win the round that way, especially because the timing was just so off.
Cloud9 are going to try to go for this push, though, and it seems like it is, as you mentioned, just going to be an all attempt to, at the very least, work to get the bomb onto the ground. The shuffle in, there's actually no kills at the start, so Cloud9 have a pretty good track record here with trying to overwhelm them. They get that first kill, and again, focusing on the plan here, that's essentially guaranteed for Shroud, so mission accomplished there. Anything else they get from this point forward is just a bonus, but it's not looking like that is going to be likely. Automatic left as that last man standing, and I don't even think he will attempt to contest the second he does, and he's there. It's an easy shot from Nisinko on automatic, and Immortals will still win the round. Yeah, and Steel actually got caught out. I thought he was going to multi-frag pretty hard there. Um, but when they get out upper and they start, you know, going across that lane like that, it's really tough to, for Steel to hold because he shoots at that lower guy, that lower guy sees him, then hides, and then all of a sudden they're coming from the left, the right, wide peeking you running super fast with pistols. Now Cloud9 on another buy though, and they get a really good one because of that bomb plant. Yeah, full AKs along with pretty much full utility for the rest of the team. And uh, they're being pretty quick about this one too, as we can see them all shifting out here through the white halls leading up to the top of the, at the top of the ladder room. And it's also been cause for some rotations over here on the side of the Immortals. Lucas already shifting himself over there to the B side of Z8 to wait this one out. Or as the rest of them, again, sit patiently and sort of wait for an outside execution is that has been Cloud9's go-to strat. We haven't actually seen a lot of uh, inner executes on gun rounds. They've mainly been doing it on anti-ecos in that last round there when they were finally forced to save after they'd been dominant up to that point. Yeah, and I think they are going to go with some type of a set strat here. Look at Immortal's utility. Almost nothing. Two flashes, a Molotov, and a nade. So this is going to be a lot more difficult to stop than I thought might have might have been. Um, they throw really nice counter nades, though. Wow! 11 and 13 health before they even see anybody. So immediately Shroud and Stewie are completely destroyed. Bolts is even going to finish one of them off here while the smoke is still in effect. Gets the second one too. Bolts is going off right now. However, at the same time, the bomb did deploy over here towards Inner. Lucas again, though, having these free angles. Skadoodle not even checking towards Z because of the Molotov, but it was placed way too far in front there. So that was not going to hold them back at all. Automatic at least finding one kill, but failing to account for Lucas. He continues to go off. Nothing will be there for the trade. He needs to get these last two kills, though. He's got one of them low, but it won't be happening. Steel finishes the job, and it's Immortals one round away from time this back up yeah and, and it was a pretty nice fake i mean they they got the bomb down they even ended up getting three kills after it's 3v5 but the the perfect counter molotov and counter you know i was talking about how they have a, a small amount of utility to work with but they just used it absolutely perfectly i mean bolts kills one through the smoke and then shroud runs through the smoke and dies but one nade one molotov pretty much shut down that entire outside you know take slash fake so it looks like a tactical pause more than likely being called here from Cloud9. The first we've seen tonight, uh, as that was the, that was something the analysts brought up on that last match, is we actually never even saw any pauses uh, being taken by Winterfox. They're finally we're going to see one, of course, in a completely different match. Cloud9 obviously losing control of the situation, so they need to figure out how they can retake it on this T side. Yeah, and this is... See, to me, Cloud9, like I said, they're really good on train at, like, the pistols. They're really good at... Um, you know, T-side when they're playing against low economical buys. But then when these teams get like full money, they get the full Molotovs, which is, of course, they're always gonna be the hardest rounds to win. But I think they struggle with that more than other teams, you know? Like when you look at a team like Astralis or something like that, you know, these, of course, they're tier one teams and Cloud9 are right there, but they, they do struggle against these fully bought rounds, you know, trying to break the, break these, these you know, Molotovs and smokes and whatnot. But they get a, a nice 4v5 um, on FNX, getting really aggressive at Ivy. So nothing able to take him out, and there's four towards Inner. So he's just there to try to keep three outside right now and uh, delay any type of an Inner rotate. Well, it is. Still going to be the loss of FNX early on as the rest of C9 sits at the gates of B, ready to deploy at a moment's notice. They did have nothing positioned in Ivy, but unfortunately it was no match for Bolts. He's been nigh unstoppable as of these last five rounds now over at Ivy there. He's been winning almost every single battle he's been put up against. Great timing on this Molotov too. He's going to hold back C9 for even longer. They already have two sitting just within the reach of Z that will be able to challenge. The smoke will be in the way, so unfortunately they're not going to be able to do wow. it too great, but Steel spraying through this massive damage. It takes down Shroud. So Doodle's now down at 9 HP. They will be able to go in for the plant, but they're going to be heavily disadvantaged. And actually, no, they cancel the plant, which lets Steel walk right up. Henny got the kill on Skadoodle. All that's left is Stewie, and Steel's just going to leap right back down and finish things off. Beautifully played by Steel and the rest of Immortals to hold on to that B site. Yeah, very nicely timed, and I think nothing made a mistake dying at Ivy there. I think, you know, I, I know they didn't take the, the inner bomb site, but I think it, in that position, if you're nothing, you got to just trust that your teammates can take the site and get the bomb down. And just your mere presence of being alive makes their rotate so much slower. Like, all of a sudden, if you're alive there and you're nothing, they have to worry about that lurk and that flank the entire round until he is spotted. Um, 
So, but, but at the end of the day, they run outside very, very quickly. FNX tries pushing Ivy again and gets taken out. Automatic just jumping out team mid, Stewie getting another kill. And this is what they opt to do. They're saying, hey, nothing's working where we're trying to do things, you know, really, let's be honest, like strategically speaking, let's just kind of go for it. And they just run out and get these kills. Shroud is going to get blinded though, but there's a slow fall from him. Wow. Doesn't matter. And he gets the drop down <laughs> shot on this Shroud. Nicely picked up from him. He tries to follow it up with one more against Skadoodle, but it is not meant to be all that's left alive, however, is going to be Steel. However, Steel sneaking in. I don't think anybody's accounting for this other tunnel right now, so he's got a free one on the Stewie. Picks that one up, goes in for the second, but thankfully Skadoodle has a quick adjustment and is able to take him down before he gets anything else going there. Yeah, but I mean, that's, that's really all Cloud9 needed. Like, that one more round even if they lose these next two, really puts them in a great position for that CT side. Just winning, you know, the pistol, you'd have to favor them. Um, Immortals is able to get a, a nice buy-in, uh, pretty much just a, an absolute force buy. But FNX's pushes, the, the the last two rounds have been, you know, punished by by nothing. That's been really big. Now they, they go for more of a default. I think it's a 2-1-2 right now. Uh, might be two team mid though. So just one box all, I think. Steel is going to be trying to push forward again here over in the back box halls. Automatic in the meantime is meeting some of his own troubles here. And there's pressure working its way out through Ivy. We can see nothing finding that first kill there. Trades back and forth. It leads us into a 3v3. But look at how lit everybody on C9 is. Are they going to see Stewie over top? They will. FNX is able to easily punish that. And now nothing. Well, he's got the only one left, the only position left over here towards Ivy, but it's 7 HP. It's not likely that he's going to be able to do much. Shot in the back to end things, and it's down to Skadoodle now at four. And with them already having pressure on both sides of Ivy, more than likely the second he walks into the open, he'll be a dead man and Immortals will tie the game up again. Yeah, they will. Skadoodle only on four health, but he does have the bomb. So he will be able to pick up that first kill actually very easily against Henny. And now the bomb site is relatively open. Uh, unfortunately, Steel drops down pretty quickly and corrects that before it can go any farther than that. Skadoodle knocked out, and indeed, we do end up in that tie scenario described previously. And, and Steel has, like, slowly, I, I mean, I don't want to say transformed because I, I, I'm not... I don't know what type of position he played on before Immortals, uh, but I know when he joined Immortals, he was talking about being out of position and just kind of learning things because he went one-to-one -to, -one to Zeus's spots. But from what I've seen from Steel, uh, especially lately in this past month or so, it's that he slowly transitioned himself into like a pretty stellar solo site player, like consistently being able to play, you know, in or on train and getting kills without dying and getting info and playing really, really smart CS. Um, and it's been very impressive. Bit of a messy spray from him though, and this this case is he is forced to fall back. He does a little bit of damage to Stewie though, knocking about. Yeah, about but, half but his look HP. at the look at the mini map. There's three players towards Inner right now, you know, because FNX has such a quick rotate from Z. They've they've done nothing on the other side of the map, so Henny and Bolts are just spotting outside, and and Steel spots him Inner, so they're in great position right now to win the round. And again, even r with the resmoke back inside. He is trying to wait for Stewie to go for the peak. Looks away, but no, Stewie is still able to follow it through immediately with some great timing on his own regard there. He takes down Steel. This will swing the site wide open, but they still have to worry about dueling these guys in the backside here. Trying to smoke it back off to make it easier for themselves. And it does work to a certain degree. In fact, Stewie still has to push all the way up through upper somehow. No one on Immortal spots him. FNX with a quick trade and Henny with a dirty headshot up in the face of Automatic, taking him down. It's good to know with an additional trade, but he's got to watch out as again, there's still this presence from the bottom of upper here. FNX being able to spot that. He takes down Skadoodle. We're in an even 2v2. And also, FNX almost has a guaranteed victory versus Shroud right now. He has such an HP advantage. Henny winning out that duel on nothing. But Shroud takes down FNX, actually. So it's down to the 1v1. Henny's low on time. And again, Shroud just wasting it away right now. Not trying to take this duel. Henny finds the shot. But I don't think he has enough time to defuse this. It's going to be very, very close. And we'll have to see in a moment. I don't think it's happening. No. It'll be Cloud9 that take it at the end of the half. And it's been an epic one at that, ladies and gentlemen. Cloud9 just barely hold the advantage. It'll be eight to seven. Be sure to tune back in in just a few moments as we'll be bringing you the second half in this very, very epic game. ESL Pro League is brought to you in part by Logitech G, Pay Safeguard, Mountain Dew League, and ESEA.
All right, and we're back, and it's a much different tale from our first matches, if you were watching those as well. Very, very close indeed between these two very high-tier teams in the North American scene. It is the Immortals taking on Cloud9. Cloud9 just barely took the edge in a very close down to the wire, missed a fuse by Immortals there, so they have the advantage now 8-7 to seven coming off of their T side. Yeah, and those two, you know, after they went up 6-0, six, six, oh, they, they won two rounds after that. But it was like these very, very gritty rounds, right? The one where they kind of just jump out team mid and Ivy, and they're able to get those kills. And then that very last round where they just do a hard inner push, and Immortals was set up really well. I think that was a little bit of like a, a brain fart by Steel there to be pushing up in that situation after he spotted. Don't agree with that at all. I think he should have dropped down oil because you don't need that, right? You have them cornered. You know what they're doing. You have three people there. You don't need to do anything crazy. As long as you just hold your spot and you get, you know, your one kill and stay alive, round probably over, right? So just just a little bit of a mistake by Steel there. And at the end of the day, you know, Cloud9 had a great half. Eight rounds on the T side. As Bolt just gets gooshed <laughs> through. That's that's from, that's from outside sight as well, I think. So already getting taken down to 36 HP because of that. There's basically nothing you can do about that, unfortunately. So... Cloud9 will have a little bit of an early edge because of that. But still, the defenses here on B are a little bit weak, so they do need to be fast on the rotate here. And you can notice that the guys that are actually in the site, well, they, again, they get smoked back out for the most part, so they really can't do anything. FNX pushing right back up. Still, he did find this one kill, but then he's been traded up by Lucas. Goes one to one at least, but now the flank working its way back in. Nothing pummeling on Henny there, ticking him back down. But. The other issue being is that they allowed Immortals to move in for such good control that now they're going to have trouble even getting outside of Z. That won't be trouble apparently for Shroud though as he does move back in. They're already on the bomb and they just dispatch of everyone from the Immortals. It was looking so good at first, but they can't hold any control or win any of the duels when Cloud9 decided to push back in. Yeah, and this gives this gives C9 like a pretty commanding lead now that they took the second half pistol after winning that first half pistol as well. And, you know, Immortals... Again, I thought they were in great position to win that round. If if nothing doesn't win that duel versus Henny, if FNX, you know, gets gets you know those two guys coming there when he was shooting them in the back, um, this round could be just so different. And that's quite a few rounds now that could have went that way. The pistol round on T side, Steel probably should have won that. If you ask him, I guarantee you he's like, I messed up, man. I definitely should have had that kill. He's the man guy, by the way, so he always says man. <laughs> if you saw that thing on Reddit. Um, but, you know, that round, they, they kind of blew. They, you know, they had a couple rounds here that they were really well in position to win. The round at inner when they had three people, and then Steel's up on the upper ramp. Remember, and Stewie kills him. So a couple of different situations where Immortals is very favored positionally um, and should come out with a dub. Doesn't go their ways, and, and those are big swings when you're playing against a team that's, that's you know, whether we're talking about C9 being better than Immortals or Immortals being better than C9, they're pretty equivalent, right? They're like when they play each other, it's pretty back and forth. It's always very close. I think Immortals won the last two best of threes versus them, but it's always so close. So they're very even, uh, evenly matched. Well, here in this round, it seems like Claw 9 is holding pretty good control, possibly not even going to lose a single player. It might be likely for Stewie to still get knocked off because he's at 1 HP, but actually nothing. Just put a stop to this. And indeed, it is a clean sweep from Cloud9. Not a single guy goes down, and they will push forward here 7 to 10, already being able to build up a decent bank. But now the Immortals on the third round, since they did get the plant, they are going to be able to force into this one early on. Yeah, so they do get a buy. Um, pretty good buy at that. Uh, they don't have any Molotovs, but... All five of them have smoke, so we'll see what they opt for if they want to do some type of an exec. Um, with five smokes, I would assume that they would set up for something like that. But it does look like they're just going to go off a, a default for now. Um, maybe they'll show map control and then go back and do something like that. The Henny lining up for smoke. And they have three players towards ladder, one player towards Ivy. Yeah, and the rest of Immortals here now. Most of them, as you mentioned previously, sitting up on top of the ladder and getting ready to deploy there. But they are going to try to, again, just go for essentially what is going to boil down to be a default execute here into the outer bomb site. Cloud9 already has four position out and ready for it, but the smoke is going to cover off quite a bit. Nothing holds for his first kill, but he's down at 7 HP, so he's not going to last very long after that. Steel catches the kill. The good news is they're holding quite a few of them behind this Molotov. Automatic denies the plant, gets the second one, spins around for a third as well. Automatic goes up, 
absolutely insane as they don't even realize where he's positioned. So huge kills from him. And now it's all down to F and X and he's got the world set against him. And he's not even, <laughs> oh my God, Automatic even gets that fourth kill as well. That was beautiful. That was so well done by Automatic. The team mid smoke is down, so he's not afraid to put his back towards it. He knows one across site. He just systematically knows like, exactly who's gonna peek him and when. He sees the player, you saw, he saw that player's gun that's in ladder, and he doesn't panic or anything like that. He just walks around, he takes his time, and just plays that to perfection. So now Immortals back onto another, essentially a full save here, just upgraded pistols and a Tech-9 sitting on steel. Uh, very quickly pushing their way down to the bottom of the ladder room, but Henny just rolls right on his own, and that seems to be it. Something else following that up, and now like he's just continuing to spray into it, see if he can get some extra bonus damage onto these guys. The rest of the Immortals are kind of shattered between box halls and the bottom of ladder room, so it's a bit interesting to see where they're going to go after Henny just kind of dived down on his own, and nothing followed up that. Yeah, and they're just hoping to get a plant here. Automatic set up very well once again. Basically a crossfire with Stewie. Um, they can do a little bait and switch all day there. FNX gets a kill though um, at outside. So 3v1, but he is going to be able to, to wrap around and maybe you know salvage something in this round. If he could get to CT spawn and, and get lucky enough to shoot somebody in the back if Cloud9 doesn't adjust their setup to account for it. But it looks like they will. Nothing's watching. Um, that area of the map, but in about 10 seconds, he's gonna have to worry about the uh, the long way from CT. So, you know, Automatic has inner cut off. They have to worry about three spots, right? Nothing holding it though, so he, he actually had that cross. I wasn't aware he was holding that entire angle. Um, makes easy work of FNX. And so Cloud9 continue to push forward with a heavy advantage. Now five rounds in front of the guys from the Immortals here now. They will get another investment going, but depending on Henny's choice here, if he goes for glass cannon, obviously he's not going to have a lot sitting behind that, which it does appear to be the decision he makes. So he'll go for the risky buy now, and the rest will just be picking up AKs for this one. Yeah, and they start on a 3-1-1, three towards Ivy, so they might opt for him to, like, post up, try to get, and, and then try to let uh, FNX and uh, Lucas, you know, kind of push up. So we have the Twins and FNX right now. And Henny getting ready to possibly go for this peak. The flashbang following it up first, but no, there is no one else to distract. So Stewie immediately finds the shot. Down goes the op. Lucas will be able to pick it back up and he actually catches Stewie as he peeks out from the corner there. So a good trade indeed. That will give them access to Ivy. They want to push for it, but Trout will just kind of panic mind that one back off. And he even goes with the spray so close, and he does actually finish off the kill into FNX. Re equalizes things and gives Cloud9 the advantage here now. And they'll go ahead 4v3 and Immortals again. Still no control. No one's pushed out. Well, they dab now. Steel moving himself out from the ladder room here. Finds that first kill. Looking for more, but no, there's too many players set out against him. Shroud will be able to take down Steel. And now it's just down to Lucas as he also found the kill onto Bolts. Lucas is just going to go for this too. He knows Shroud is sitting in the corner here somewhere, but Shroud already dinked him. And with a follow-up flashbang, you'll have no problem finishing him off with his USP. Yeah, 4K. Back-to-back -back 4Ks on gun rounds, right? Automatic gets that 4K. Now Shroud gets this 4K. And that was... That was so nice when he's just running through the smoke. I mean, he shot like 20 bullets and every, his crosshair was just on FNX like the entire time. Just, just shroud things. <laughs> Doesn't seem like many other people could do things like that, but that was very, very nice by him. Well, we do see the pause being called here now. The tactical pauses this time are obviously coming in from the Immortals as uh, they're falling behind by quite a large margin here. And we can see the fall off from some of these big players too. Henny, I think, was sitting close to about 110 ADR at the beginning of the half. You know, we're like six or seven rounds in now and he's fallen to 80. Also, I don't think he's gotten that many frags. He was sitting at a pretty similar KD back at the half as well. So not a lot of improvements on his own end. Meanwhile, Automatic just dominating the playing field right now. 21 and 13. Stewie following pretty close behind 19 and 50. Pretty much the usual suspects you expect to be leading the pack there. And he was a quiet 21 and 15. I, I didn't realize he had 21 frags. If you ask me who like is, who looks like he has the most frags and has the most impact on Immortals right now, I would have definitely said FNX. I had no idea that he was he had 21 and 15 and was really just miles ahead of everybody else on the squad. Like, why did I say 21 and 15 if he's uh, 16 and 14? Don't know. An error, I guess. And we'll automatic to... is in 17 and 12. Didn't it what? say he was more? <laughs> didn't it say he had more frags? Yes. I think it said need, he had like. We need QCs over there, Blue. <laughs> we need some QCs. You get a quality check the stats. Maybe it yep. counted like some of the the like the frags. Account pre-game. Like 
Anyway, back to business. As Immortals are trying to uh, force this one up a little bit here. They've got a scrounge together by of AKs, upgraded pistols, and whatnot. Decent utility, I think, for pretty much the whole team. Uh, but uh, the gun power is what's really going to be lacking here overall. But they are trying to just go for a default execute again. Like I said, I'm pretty sure they have like the smokes in the They're trying to deploy for this. It's just when they actually get into the site, it's going to be finding those entries. That'll be the tough part. My question is, where does Immortals live? Their ping is incredible. Don't they live in California? They're in LA. Is, Cl is Cloud9 in LA? I think they they maybe I think they're spread out now. I don't. They're all over oh, the place, really? right? I don't know. Stun is signaling to us, but I can't hear him. So. <laughs> so they have anyway. the best ping I've ever seen, man. <laughs> <laughs> that really good internet. Well, mortals are going to be trying to push their way over here towards outer now. We can see Skadoodle sitting back, waiting for this one. Sinks the first kill, no problem at all. Automatic also holding with a Kobe shot there. He's going to be able to take down Steel. Skadoodle with another one. FNX trades, but it's of little consequence at this point in the round here. Bolts finally gets a good angle to take down Skadoodle, but Automatic trades him out almost instantaneously. And I think he dinks FNX too. FNX will chain together one more, but nothing will pretty quickly shut him down after that. Cloud9 up to 14, two more to go, and they get the win. Yeah, and Immortal's on another pretty poor buy. And it's just been all Cloud9 this time. So, Cloud9, they... Well, we, yeah, so they got rid of the team house pretty recently. So oh, really? So they're spread out. Yeah, so they got, they got rid of that like a month ago, I think. I didn't know that. And then Immortals were pretty sure they're somewhere in Orange County. Maybe they're, like, one of the few people that actually... F they're one of the few neighborhoods that, like, actually has, like, like a Fios or something like that. Dude, they it's so much fun like to play Counter Strike when you have five ping though. It's it's honestly the best. Is that, is that land ping at that point. It's the best. <laughs> it really is. I think I can get that to uh, MM servers actually, if if, it, if it's in LA. It's where you belong, Blue. <laughs> Matchmaking. <laughs> All right. So Shroud's going to be able to find the first pickup here. And again, it's just Cloud9. I mean, it's, it sort of just seems like, to be honest, that Immortals have sort of lost all of their steam. Even the pause hasn't really helped out much as Cloud9 continues to dominate this one. Although they do get into inner relatively free. There's not a lot of resistance at all. Stewie's held pretty far back with that second op. And he's not able to do a whole lot of work with it. Molotov's even going to go back too. This should send a few of them out. Nothing picking up bolts. Still no trade kills at all. Finally, there's one from Henny to be able to take down Stewie. But now nothing. Oh, he actually runs out of ammo. So Henny's going to be able to capitalize on his second. Here comes the big flank though from automatic he actually doesn't spot anyone outside of ramp as they are holding more forward positions here but he's gonna roll forward he grabs any and now all that's left is fnx he's already down at 14 hp doesn't have a molly they actually toss one out at him but it goes a little bit too short and they're already diffusing it here too and the second he walks too far out of that smoke skadoodle's gonna shut him down a cloud up to 15 now and they're not showing any signs of struggling yeah unfortunate for immortals but i don't even think yeah they don't have one round even in this entire half and you know losing both pistols losing a couple rounds that you're really well positioned to win um and you know just giving cloud nine those advantages has made this pretty lopsided and we'll see if Immortals can try to do anything here as they're very quickly trying to go for outside control. Flashbangs is the one that happened good. There's basically zero response to this initial push from C9, and they're all getting pushed back over here in the old bomb tunnel. We can see now that Skadoodle, along with nothing, are going to try to push back up. But Flashbangs again, perfect. Nothing. He won't have any responses, but no, there's some hesitation, so nothing grabs the kill. Skadoodle dropping down from the ladder, is able to pick up the frag on a Henny. It's 3v3, but very Immortal sided 3v3 at this point as Cloud on a bit pushed back, and they have no control. Very hesitant about the way that they are going to be proceeding about this retake. And Immortals just busted right and had great smoke setups. Kenzie Stewie's gonna get boosted up on top. That gives him an angle against Steel. So now they've got a bit of an advantage to work with here. Shroud though needs to get up from this Ivy Tunnel. Stewie actually caught up initially there. He's now down to 15 HP. Two more smokes. Give them a bit of room to work with. Both these T's sitting in the backside. Bolt's finding one. Stewie picking up an additional kill. He knows this last one's hiding out in the ladder, but no! FNX sprays them both down. We need to see that again from his perspective as he manages to clutch that up beautifully, keeping Immortals in the game for a little bit longer. Yeah, and Cloud9, their money isn't too good, so we'll see if they want to buy here or play it a little bit more conservatively. Looks like they're just going to opt to save. They're in no hurry to try to end this right now. I, I think they're confident that if they just get the utility needed to stop any type of a rush, like Immortal just won that round with, uh, they'll probably be able to close it out pretty quickly. So nicely done there. Again, the clutch comes out in the 2v1 scenario, and Cloud9 now, as you mentioned previously, go onto an eco here. Not a whole lot of investment for them, and Stewie's actually going to be rather aggressive sitting over here in the box also to try to get an early spot and give them the best chance to flank and rotate into this one. He spots the pressure, seeing at least two of those players. Nothing I think is just going to camp out, though, to call it out if they do fall back and try to go towards outer. Do a bit of a 1-2 switcheroo, but as Steel pushes himself, or excuse me, as nothing pushes himself back up, Steel's going to have a quick shutdown there. Skadoodle looking for this angle. Can't find it. Stewie, along with his team 
teammate there trying to double team over the bomb train, but none of this is working. Stewie is already the last player alive, and even he's not going to find anything. Yeah, Immortal's winning that one pretty clean, 9-15. to 15, But this is still a very uphill climb uh, for Immortals if they want to win this game, because Cloud9, you know, after this round, they're going to have a good amount of money bonus. They're going to be able to buy every other round a half buy and probably still buy the following round. So it's it's a tough hill to, to really climb for Immortals here. Cloud9 gets a pretty decent buy right now. No, or just, just Skidoodle on the off, though. No double up setup for C9. Molly's come out towards team in. It looks like it's just a full rush. Automatic already shutting down one of them, and this may seem to be where Immortals will lose all of their stride. Three kills now for Cloud9. Nothing is a good angle, even though he's flashbang. He swings out, destroys Lucas, grabs half the HP off of Henny before finally going down to the very player he was trying to kill. But now Henny in a 1v4 with only 20 HP to work with. It is looking like, ladies and gentlemen, that Cloud9 should be able to take control here on train with 16 to 9 as the probable scoreline. Henny just placing himself back is going to look to try and capitalize on any overaggression that he can. But Cloud9 don't want to throw this away. So there will be none of that from them. They'll just sit back and they'll wait for Henny to make the move. And well, we'll see Skidoodle being the one to actually fire the shot off there. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 16 to 9 will indeed be our final scoreline. And it'll be Cloud9 taking really great control, especially towards the middle to closing rounds here in the second half. Yeah, and then, you know, winning both pistols, like I said, um, winning two rounds on T-side that I don't think they were necessarily positioned or, or you know, really had Immortals outplayed on on that T-side. And, you know, like I said, these teams are pretty evenly matched, in my opinion. So when one team gets that type of an edge, you know, winning both pistols, right, that's a big swing just right there, right? And then also winning that one gritty round at inner where they had those three people, that's a big swing. That's enough to put you over that, the, the hump against a team that you're pretty close to. All right, so for right now, guys, we're going to send it back over to the analysis desk. Guys, let's break down map number one. Hey, thanks, Blue. Started off a little bit slow there for the Immortals, but they were able to start piecing it together uh, later in the first half. Walk me through this. Well, I mean, first off, it's, uh, it's like uh, what Sam said there uh, before they tossed it over. The fact that they get off to a great start with Pistol, and then they win the first buy round, and... Uh, like every close round that they had for the better part of that first half goes the the way of Cloud9 until, like you said, Immortals are able to find some sort of an answer. And for the better part of the CT side, we saw a lot of aggression coming out from FNX especially, which uh, oftentimes didn't necessarily pan out with a massive advantage for uh, for Immortals because normally when you see trades being happening, like one-for-one -one trades, they would normally for, uh, favor the T side, but they were still able to... to do a lot with it and i think uh, bolts even though he didn't necessarily end up with like a massive score in that sense uh in the f throughout the first half he still had vital impact frags uh, whenever cloud9 wanted to sell try to sell sort of uh, any sort of a fake towards that outer bomb site bolts was always ready to, to kind of clamp down on whatever cloud9 wanted to do you know who else was already ready or excuse me always ready over on cloud9 I mean, I, there was quite a few, but quite Tim. a few. Let yeah, let's look at Tim Ta right here. We've got round 18 loaded up. Tim Ta doing work. Yeah, and uh, what's cool here is that this is a bit of a you know some ways into the round. It's a, more taking a slow approach to this. And normally, what we saw De Beers uh, talking about Cloud Nine is that they don't really shy off going aggressively once they are given the opportunity. So you're going to see Scott finding the first. Now it's nothing finding the first frag here on the bomb site, but seeing how they have good counter nades, it allows for uh, automatic to get into really aggressive position here and just amazing work getting all those three kills. Just getting two of them would have been more than enough. But the fact that they're able to utilize this space, even in like later on scenarios and during executes, is just uh, really well done. And that's something that, you know, uh, was shown on this illustrator by De Bears. Oh, Papa De Bears coming Yeah, well, like, you know, the guy knows CS, right? Yes, indeed he does. He has more hours logged in Counter-Strike than I do believe probably us combined. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, no, I mean, so obviously we know Immortals comes out. Slow start. Yeah. We actually didn't see them grab a single pistol across the entire map. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, more than that, we also didn't see them grab a single T-Round. Uh, yeah, well, we did see them grab one at the very Excuse end. Me. FNX double kill right. uh, I guess towards the end there. Yeah, uh, but that was more of a, you know, uh, kind of a s saving face kind of around more than anything. It didn't really swing things in their direction. Uh, and I, I think it's again, comes back to what uh, Dave said, really. The fact that when you have two very evenly matched teams, when you have those small swing rounds going in your favor, that's actually going to play a much bigger difference than what it would otherwise. So uh, that's really what went, went the way of Cloud9. But still, you got to give credit to Immortals because... They were able to deal with Cloud9's slow approach to the game on the T side. What they really struggled with was the fast-paced executes coming out from uh, from C9, which is kind of weird considering how they use their utility, but yeah. 
can get back to that at a later stage. Hey, we will get back to it at a later stage. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we've got Cloud on Immortals Part 2 here on Cobble.